Well, a story we've been covering here at Redacted for a number of months is the rollout of the DIA program, the DIA Super App, which is, of course, a program between Google and Visa and supported, of course, by USAID and your tax dollars to make sure that all Ukrainians are surveilled, their banking information is surveilled, and they can even snitch on their neighbors if they think that they are Russian sympathizers. Just go right to the DIA app. Hey, my neighbor might be associated with Russia. Can you go and make that person disappear? That's how the DIA app works. And uh, (laughs) this was rolled out in Washington, D.C. as a big event this past week. Max Blumenthal from the Gray Zone somehow managed to get in and get a ticket and was in the audience for this big event. And there's a, a lot of moments in this event that I want to get Max's take on. So Max from the Gray Zone is back with us here. Max, great to see you. Good to see you. So you were at this DIA rollout event, and it's amazing when you're sitting there in the audience, you see on the stage all of the the players associated with this, like they have their logos up on the screen, right? You've got Google, Visa, USAID, um, all pouring billions of dollars into this program, which for those people who don't understand DIA, um, it really is like Ukraine has become like the Petri dish, the test ground for them to roll out this full-time surveillance with a smartphone. Is that not how it works? Completely. I mean, (laughs) Zelensky calls this the the state within a smartphone and the future of e-governance. And the heartbeat, right? He says like you can feel like Ukraine's heartbeat within this smartphone, within this app. It's, It's the state right in your hand, the government in your hand. Yeah, when your phone buzzes then, because you have an alert, that's the heartbeat of the state, according to Zelensky, at a speech where? At the spook fest, the spook mecca of Stanford. That's where he made that speech? That was the speech where he had, yeah. So he, I want to play a little bit of that. This is Zelensky sort of announcing and talking about Dia. Let's play a little bit of Zelensky, because they put him up on stage on the big screen to so he could really introduce what Dia is all about. Take a look. iPhone. It's a І воно б'ється, б'ється з кожним вібро під час дзвінка або під час СМС. А в ньому наше українське творіння держава у смартфоні. Мільйони українців щоденно користуються нашим державним сервісом Дія. Okay, so it is the the heartbeat of of Ukraine. One thing of course that he doesn't say or doesn't talk about is the surveillance piece of this. And that was another part of this program, Max. I just want to play a little clip of this. You captured this footage from the event where they're talking about, hey, if you've got a neighbor that you think is a Russian sympathizer, all you need to do, there's even a drone program game within the app where you can like basically almost drop a drone bomb on your friend. Like that's how this works. Take a look. This is ridiculous. The enemy, a chatbot that helps any citizen safely transfer info about the location of Russian troops names of collaborators, and enemy movements to the armed forces. Numerous attacks of Russian army destroyed a number of TV towers. To provide Ukrainians with uninterrupted access to information, we launched DIA Radio and DIA TV, so that even under blackouts, millions could feel present. So Max, the, it, it, so it has built-in snitching, is what, it, what this app does as well. If you suspect that your neighbor is a Russian collaborator, or if you're having a dispute with your neighbor, and you want to make them go away, in other words, you want to have Ukrainian death squads run by the SBU security services come, snatch your neighbor, disappear them, and have them wind up in a ditch. Well, you can do it with the click of a single button within the state in a smartphone app known as DIA, and it was promoted as such. We've, we've actually seen what's been happening to accused collaborators all across Ukraine. There's video of them going up on t- the Telegram channels of neo-Nazi accounts inside Ukraine, showing them throwing bodies into mass graves. Um, and mayors have been assassinated after being accused of collaborating with Russia. The Ukrainian interior ministry is presiding over this entire program, and every single opposition party has been outlawed. The main party uh, that was Zelensky's democratic rival, Patriots for Life. I mean, we've seen their deputies rounded up and disappeared, killed their leader, Viktor Medvedchuk, was taken away and thrown in a military prison, roughed up. Uh, This is the reality of Ukraine today, and this smartphone app is enabling it, and they're promoting it at a Hollywood-style event with the director of USAID, Samantha Power, on stage, along with 
probably the most famous tech journalist in America, Kara Swisher, sitting right there. Kara Swisher, who, as we've talked about here on the show in the past, is really a mouthpiece for a lot of these different tech events. Um, I'd yep. be curious to know how much they pay her to to MC these events. We saw her on stage with Yoel Roth most recently. Um, she does these uh, she does these events. So she was there with Samantha Power, and she brought up the corruption. Samantha Power acknowledged that Ukraine is uh, one of the most corrupt governments in Europe and that they've still got a lot of corruption. But that, but because of the DIA app specifically, that's how we managed to funnel $15 billion, I should say launder $15 billion to Ukraine. Watch this amazing moment. One of the things that Congress has given USAID uh, since this full-scale invasion began is an unprecedented amount of money mm -hmm. in direct budget support, which sounds kind of obvious. Of course, we would do that. We want to stand with Ukraine, but it's totally unprecedented, these, this kind of scale of investment. And we're talking in, along the lines of about $15 billion in, in a sense, cash to mm -hmm. the Ukrainian government, mm -hmm. which was famously corrupt mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in past years and still has work, as you noted, to do on corruption today. I don't know if we could have gotten that money out of Congress if not for DIA. Mm -hmm. Because what DIA allows us to do is that direct budget support goes, yes, to the Ukrainian government, but then it goes to pay teachers, to pay healthcare workers, to pay first responders. And there's a digital trail. It's not, you know, some official deciding this or that. It actually is going directly into the bank accounts in a manner that just it would have been untraceable in a in a in a prior regime. So, so Max, she acknowledges. I mean, she acknowledges the corruption and the and she basically says that Congress really wouldn't have probably approved this if it went through normal channels. But because of the DIA app, we can literally launder money right into Ukraine this way. We can funnel it and go around the normal protocols, right? And directly pay doctors, teachers, healthcare workers. So pretty much any public employee in Ukraine is being paid by you, the American taxpayer, while teachers in Los Angeles have to go on strike for decent wages. And they're paying them through this shady experimental app. Uh, and, and we're supposed to believe that that roots out corruption. I mean, the, the entire scheme of us giving record amounts of money that Congress would have never approved were it not for a totalitarian digital ID app is in itself it's sh in itself it should be a major scandal you also had a chance you got roughed up a little bit uh by some of the security that was there <laughs> the the u.s aid guy uh this u.s aid guy kept showing up in your videos putting a hand in front of the camera i just want to play a few of those moments here's one of them and get you to talk about this after the event you had a chance to speak with eurasia foundation um head i guess it was the head of uh, pamela spratlin yeah, she was on she, she was a former on u.s ambassador Okay, that's right. That's Kyrgyzstan. right. Kyrgyzstan. So she was on stage um, beside the chairman of Visa, and who you know was was talking about this new app. So I want to play your interactions with her. This event was about profiting off of war, turning Ukraine into a laboratory, Are you absolutely the ruins wrong? of Ukraine into a laboratory for the fourth industrial revolution. You are absolutely um, getting ruined, Ukrainians Ukraine. all in a digital. No, you are not interested in the, in yeah, the yeah, answer, please. And can you tell me why my my colleague Anya Park was on a kill list? Your interior ministry maintains a kill list of journalists, and my partner here, Anya Parnfield, is on it. Unlike uh, in Ukraine, you can't kill and ban your opposition here. Our Nazis actually have to hide behind the government, not serve in the government. I thought it was quite interesting. So it appeared like she was she maybe she was about to answer you, but before the U.S. aid guy gets in the way, what did what were you trying to get out of her? Well, I was just wondering if she was ashamed to be at an event where war profiteers, like the head of Visa, were so shame were so proudly discussing their efforts to turn Ukraine into a laboratory, to turn the ravages of Ukraine into a laboratory. No one was on stage talking about ending the war or a negotiated settlement or peace. They were clearly talking about how to harvest more money and data from Ukrainians. And here you have Pamela Spratlin just brought out to stand beside the head of Visa. She said basically nothing. 
And I asked, I just wanted to know what she thought of that. And if she actually believed that this was about war profiteering when it just so clearly was. And uh, yeah, I didn't get to answer. The guy who was pushing me, I later found out, is named Alex Howard. And he's the head of something called Digital Democracy, which is, uh, uh, it seems to be a USAID initiative or it's sponsored by USAID or the State Department to train people in countries across Eastern Europe and other frontiers of US regime change and you know internet literacy and so on. So he was he was forcefully shoving me and I told him you're not, if you're not security you should get your hands off me. Um, and he then did he it continued again. to kind of manage me. Yeah, he did it too when you you were speaking with the US, uh, US ambassador, Ukraine's ambassador to the United States, uh o yeah. Oksana Markarova. Yeah. yeah, you were asking her um specifically about this, you know, using using Ukraine as basically a petri dish, right? You were asking again yeah. this proving ground for all of this stuff, right? Yeah, just just kind of a moral question of whether they think it's okay to surrender their country and their country's citizens to these multinational financial interests and tech tech overlords to use them as test dummies in a scheme to accelerate the fourth industrial revolution or what world economic forum chief klaus schwab calls the great reset where ultimately the biological is merged with the digital and it's no surprise that this dia app was actually rolled out at the 2023 world economic forum that schwab controls and that mikhailo fedorov the head of digital transformation for ukraine was on stage there delivering an even longer performance TED talk style performance than the one he delivered in DC. But this was about bringing home the DIA app for Hollywood style DC rollout at a at the Warner Theater, which is one of the most prestigious theaters in downtown DC. But that doesn't stop with Ukraine. Um, of course, we're already seeing the groundwork being laid for African nations as well. And yeah. this is so the test bed is in Ukraine, but it's going to expand, is it not? Well, that's that's the point. And, and, and that's what's so sickening and dystopian about this. Ukraine's being used be, precisely because it is not a democracy, because citizens have no power there whatsoever. Uh, they have no privacy rights. And this app, there's no question that this app has to rely on geolocation so it can be used to prevent citizens from escaping conscription. Uh, we've seen those videos, I'm sure you've reported on it, of young men being rounded up by military police and thrown in vans. Uh, how do they find them so easily? And once the rest of us are put in this system of control and we no longer have access to finance outside of central bank digital currency, and we have to produce digital I, uh, you know, vac proof of our vaccination through digital ID in order to travel, we are complete prisoners in a totalitarian digital fourth industrial revolution global prison. So this is being, so Ukraine is being used to accelerate this process and then it's being exported to other nations where citizens have the least power, nations that are tools of Western empire like Zambia and Colombia. These are nations that were announced as adopting the DIA program. Uh, Zanzibar is also next. I saw several African uh, diplomats, you know, representatives of embassies in DC at the event. Uh, and it's also part of the great power competition with China competing with the Belt and Road Initiative because China is also doing AI and using digital ID uh, all across the world. The new frontier. Yeah. So we go into the countries that are totally destabilized. It's a perfect it's a perfect test bed. The countries that we've destabilized, we get to go in and then we install yeah. this draconian system. Everyone should check and out one, the grace. Yeah, go ahead. Go and ahead. Just one last point. I yeah. mean, this this was this all came in through Zelensky. Um, I mean, there was the U.S. backed coup in 2014, the Maidan coup that brought in a, a new regime and NATO backed regime in Ukraine. But none of this was taking place until Zelensky came in, whose campaign was run by American advisors, including Nina Jankowicz. So this is a so it really shows what Zelensky represents. Uh, he represents NATO, but he also rents, represents Davos. Hmm. Yeah, that's such a great point. Such a great point.
Max Blumenthal from the Gray Zone. Read their website. It's a it's it's one of those websites. If you bookmark like one or two websites in your life, like this should be one of them, thegrayzone.com. Go read it every day. It's uh, excellent journalism, one of the best, really, I can count on like one hand uh, websites or, or companies that are doing the kind of journalism that The Gray Zone does. Max, great to see you, my friend. Thank you so much for coming back on the show. Thanks so much, Clayton. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at Redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to Redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.